happy homebrew Wednesday. Sorry I didn't post last week. And yet again this week I don't have brew footage. Um, and I'll tell you why after I crack open this beer. So, like I said, I'd be get in my last homebrew Wednesday I'd be getting some beers from Mike Dean from the Dean's List Brewery. Um, he's from he lives in Virginia in the DC area, I believe. And the first out of the three beers that he sent me, I'll post a picture here of the three beers. He also sent me his ES Punching Judy ESB and the Cum Laude um, Vienna Pale. But this is the much talked about old school, which is sent to a few people already, and have seen like um, under the table brewing review and really like. So I thought I'd make that the first beer. Um, so that, that I try a review. So um, crack it open, nice hiss. I believe all the beers were. were um, the bottle straight from the keg, so we'll see uh, how it, it's a really nice amount of carbonation. So they did a good job bottling this one. I mean, this uh, IPA glass is actually pretty good at pouring a nice head. There are a few floaties in there actually, but I'm gonna leave that last little bit. For now, maybe I should have poured a little more carefully. So I don't know how well it is in the light, but it is. I think he's going for more like an East Coast IPA, more like a Dogfish Head style. Um, so maybe all the floaties are dry hops, but uh, it's a nice, very nice clarity, uh, a nice like orangey, burnt gold color. Um, well, a very lively carbonation. You see, like the head is even rising over the top. So it's going for the aroma as the head settles a little. Okay. No off flavors. No, you know, a lot of times with some IPAs, um, especially with beginner homebrews. I know he's only he's been brewing for over a year, and he's really dialed in his new system. But a lot of times, I find that in beginner IPAs. Especially with people who don't have temperature controls, that either it's acetyl aldehyde and it really masks the hops, so there's a lot of diacetyl. And this one has a little bit of like a peachy, grapefruity sweetness that sometimes makes me think there's going to be diacetyl in the beer. But um, overall, it's a very classic um, East Coast, like um, peach, maybe a little bit of like a unripe melon and a little bit of a, a little grapefruit so really nice smelling beer i don't smell that 8.1 percent or the much of the malts but uh it is a double ipa so cheers mike and cheers to you guys it's a little fruitier right up front in the taste but there is you know a little bit of uh grapefruit and that peach i was talking about There's definitely a, it's not like a really sweet malt sweetness, like IPA that's really old. You can really, you can definitely tell there's like a slightly sweet, you know, bready malt backbone with a little bit of dryness at the end, but you get, and a little bit of alcohol. Yeah. It's not an overwhelming alcohol flavor, but you can kind of tell, this is like right out of the fridge. Like I think that as it warms, that alcohol will come out just a little bit more. Um, I don't know what temperature you fermented it at, Mike, so maybe you can post in the comments. Overall, it's a really nice, really nice beer. I might just, the only thing I would change is maybe up the dry hop just a tiny bit and then lower the fermentation temperature ever so slightly. Because um, there is a nice overall. East Coast, not too grapefruity, but yet fruity enough. A nice malt backbone, like which I'm pretty sure you were going for. But there is some notes from for like fermentation character, of maybe a little too warm. Um, but the issue is, it gets tricky. I should know it gets tr the tip. It gets tricky when you want to make sure there's a malt backbone. Um, some people will add like a caramel malt or whatever. Um, I don't know if you used caramel malts in this, you'll have to tell me. Um, but that kind of like 
that sweetness kind of enhances the alcohol, especially in double IPAs. So it's better to add like maybe a little bit of a touch of honey malt or some Munich malt um, instead of a caramel malt, just to avoid any noticeable alcohol like getting to that sweet booziness, which I pick up in this beer. I want to mention another beer mail which I actually got at work today from Colorado Fly Fisherman. A while back, he did a contest and he pulled out of a hat like beers that people wanted him to brew, and the winner he would brew the beer and send a few bottles to to um, once he brewed it. So he picked my Pilsner, um, and it took him a while to actually brew it and then send it. But I'm glad he finally did. I had, do have the other bottle he sent me of it in the freezer, so hopefully um, in this video. I'll include it at the end as a, you know, like a wrap up to the video. Um, so he sent me two bottles of the pills. So he did make, it, I'll talk about the little tweak that he made to the recipe. Um, when he, you know, when he was about to buy the ingredients, he asked me for some, you know, if there was anything he should know. And I mentioned something about the malt pill. So, um, so I'll talk about that later. So he sent me two bottles of, of the Pilsner and then two bottles of his creek I believe he recently bottled these sours and then to be careful with the box I put it on and two bottles of his also recently bottled I believe of a golden sour so if you haven't watched Colorado Fly Fisherman you should definitely check out his channel he has a really cool is a whole barrel of, of sour of sour beer he's been blending with and then he has a bunch of other cool little set carboys full of sour beer. So if, you, if you've been wanting to look into sour beers, you should definitely check out his channel. So this past Wednesday night was the first Wednesday of the month, which maybe some of you remember, which I mentioned many times, is the Bitter and Esters or my local homebrew shops bottle swap. But they made it different this month because one of our local breweries, which is called Kelso, all the way, which also brews the beers for Heartland Brewery, um, which you may have seen if you ever been done touristy stuff in New York. They have a few like brew pubs around the area and they brew most of, if not all, of the beer there. So what they did was they brewed um, a batch of wort. They did a hopped version and a non-hopped version and they allowed homebrewers to sign up and come that night to their tap room, which is basically in the middle of the brewery or, or to the side of the brewery. Um, and uh, and pick up and bring your sa sanitized carboy or bucket and fill it up with either hopped wort or non hopped wort and then you can bring it home and tweak it and ferment it every way you want. So I didn't sign up because before going there I stopped by Bitter and Esters to buy the grains and yeast and whatever else I needed for my dark sour that I wanted to brew with the Allagash dregs and my Belgian double IPA. I was all set to brew, and then sat, unfortunately, on Thursday morning when I woke up, I turned on my phone, I had a text to call my family right away, and I found out that, unfortunately, my grandmother passed away on Thursday morning in California. So, we, my family, who is, lives in New Jersey, uh, booked tickets for me and my wife and for themselves. And we uh, we all flew out to California for the weekend to Los Angeles, and it was a very, of course, very sad weekend. I'm still, you know, grieving in my own way. I'm sure it'll take time, you know, for me to get over it and get, you know, come to terms with not having her in my life anymore. Um, but I'm glad I have hobbies like home brewing to kind of take my mind off of things. So I wasn't able to brew on Sunday, and then, as I've told some brew tubers like Mike. Um, because I had to say I'm not going to have to send you beer for a little while. Um, as of this set coming Saturday night, um, where I'm, me and my, my wife and I are flying out to Israel for 10 days. So, you know, and my work schedule during the week, I thought I'd be at the brew, but it's really not, you know, so proper to say, you know, we have to prepare to go to Israel. And, oh, I'm going to take a night to brew. So I emailed to my to the brewmanaries, my main homebrew club I'm a part of. I'm going to... I was an officer of, I'm not going to be an officer in 2016 because of the baby. Um, and one person offered to buy the Belgian double IPA grains and yeast and candy sugar off of me. So 
at some point, either right when I get back from Israel or sometime this week, I'll do a brew in a bag. Um, and then I'll, you know, whatever footage I get, whenever I do brew it, I'll include it in the Homebrew Wednesday or its own video. But, um, but you, know, I, you know, I felt bad that I had all this, these ingredients and I couldn't use them right away. You know, when you want to use freshly milled grains. Um, and luckily, Teresa, one of the a really great brewer from the Bruminaries, we do have a lot of female great home brewers in the, in the Bruminaries, offered to meet up with me for a beer after work tomorrow. I'm filming this Monday night, so Tuesday night, we'll meet up at the Blind Tiger, and I'll bring the grains to, and the yeast and everything to work. I'll put the yeast in the fridge, obviously, at work. Um, and, um, and then we'll meet up for a beer after work. And, uh, and then she'll pay me for the stuff and I'll give it to her so she can brew it. And then, of course, afterwards, I'll hold looking forward to trying it. And then, of course, I'll brew the beer, you know, at some point. Uh, probably when I get back from Israel. So, so, that's, what's go so that's what's going on. Um, and um, maybe this will be a long one because I'll include two detailed home brewers from two really great, two of my favorite brew tubers. I really like Mike Dean. You've been a great supporter of mine. You comment on like all my videos, and um, and I really love yours and how passionate you are about really getting into you know into uh, honing your craft, and honing your you know, getting used to your new system, your awesome basement, and all that stuff. Cheers to Mike. Cheers to Travis or Colorado Fly Fisherman, and uh, I'll see you after some footage from. Past Wednesday night. Cheers. so slightly because the cap is not now not blue now you know indicating that it's really cold but for review you want it to be a little warm warmer so you can get all the flavors out so uh, I'm gonna pour it into my recently rinsed out Sam Adams Boston lager glass which is my favorite lager glass even more than a Pilsner glass for a Pilsner so I did bottle this from the keg, so it's pretty crystal clear. Um, no sediment, obviously. Um, and uh, pretty much a very similar color uh, to my Pilsner. Now before I dive in, one thing I did advise him of um, with this beer, uh, and he was using my recipe, is that I added a touch, even in my second version, of Munich and Vienna. I just add a little more depth complexity but I told him that really after I tasted it and a lot of people gave me a review I, I up the aromatic malt a little bit which is our my melanoidin malt and then and, and take out the Vienna and Munich so it is a touch lighter in color off the bat even in this low light in my apartment um, because of that um, and the other thing that he did differently was that he's never 
done a step mash before, so we just did a single infusion mash at a lower temperature just to keep it nice and crisp um, and uh, refreshing for a pill. So and it is still pretty nice and cold, not like ice cold, so it should be fine. Um, and then nice pale, you know, like between like orange and straw, like just that teetering, you know, color from the caramelization of the wart in the kettle. Um, and a really nice streaming amount of carbonation from the nucleation site on the glass. So a little off white head, went down a little bit already, but for Pilsner you don't really need head retention. Um, now in terms of aroma, oh yeah. So just like with mine, it's not as fresh, so it's not popping like mine does, but you definitely get that Saphir and Spaltzelak combo, which is a hallmark of this of this Barrison Walker Peel Pills homebrew recipe. Um, definitely all there. It's not as like rich from the malts as mine was with the step mash, um, but it has just enough like almost like a sweet floral lemon, um, orange um, flavor from the hop. It's not exactly mine. I'll tell you that, but the hop character is definitely there um, and what I love about the beer. And there is a little bit of like tart quality, which I don't really get in mind, but overall the pretty pretty nice hop character, so which is what I, which is the hallmark of this beer like I said. So cheers, Travis, and let's try this. Oh, it's really nice. Yeah, so he's had this on tap for a little while, so this is like towards the end of the keg, so I don't know what, what it tasted like fresh, but it has that, like that sapphire, that sap, I think it's mostly from the sapphire, because again, the dry hop is to all sapphire, it's like that really nice, like unique lemon, like lemon verbena, but not as like herbal. And like really refreshing, really orangey, really bright, you know, character and the aroma and in the taste. And I should say, the single infusion mash kind of took away a little bit of the malt richness and brought out a brighter overall hop character, which might spark my curiosity to do maybe either you do less steps. Or just just do a single infusion next time. And I'm definitely gonna take out the Munich and Vienna next time I be a brew mine. So, mm. so in the flavor, I will say though, even though this you know he has had he's been drinking on this favorite beer for a little about while, there's not as much of that like classic. You know, Pilsner malt, crisp breadiness, or crackery breadiness that you would get in a really crisp Pilsner, especially one that's brewed with like traditional hops, like Saz. But, and I do like that in mine, that has more overt malt aroma and flavor. But overall, just like with mine, um, in the keg, the hop flavor really lingered really well, even once like the dry hop character kind of died down ever so slightly. So um, overall, Travis, I'm really impressed. You know, I, I tip my tip my yarmulke to you. <laughs> I don't have a hat on. A really well, really, it's definitely different than mine, but in a good way. The only real difference is that there's a little less small complexity. Still that really nice bright hops, which I love from this beer, like I've been you know, saying. So no off flavors, no diacetyl, no DMS. And, and I guess the, you know, if you see, maybe you've seen with these cold caps, I had it in the freezer for like 20, 25 minutes, but I had to film another clip before this, and it was, it's just the right temperature now. And it's below that nice, crisp, refreshing, cold Pilsner temp, or lager, or light, 
light color beer temp and it's still really bright smelling really crisp really refreshing so cheers to Travis cheers to Mike cheer, cheers to all the people who I hope to do a beer mills with soon once I get back from Israel at the end of the month and uh, yeah so let's keep sharing our beers keep sharing our homebrew adventures through this our homebrew Wednesday videos and other brewing videos and homebrew reviews and I'll see ya when I get back from Israel. Cheers.